this is Sharon Otnes, and welcome to Wellness Chats. I'm the founder of Design Your Beautiful Life, and I help mostly women create a, a life that they don't need to escape from. And I do this all through the lens of wellness. And what's wellness? Well, wellness really is, uh, you know, it's, it's that we surround ourselves with, that we put in our body, that we put on our bodies, the relationships and people that we are with, um, all of those are part of wellness or spirituality, um, you know, relationships, all of that. So wellness is a huge, big umbrella of how we live. And, you know, in the last 10 years as a holistic health coach, I have had such a pleasure of meeting so many people that are, are have expertise in so many different parts of that wellness wheel, if you will. And I thought it would be wonderful to start introducing you to them so you can see what I see um, as, you know, just some people that are, are so... Well, they're so grounded in what they do, and they're so generous in what they give. So our first guest is actually Kristen Korot today, and she's already here with us, so that's exciting when technology, even in Mercury retrograde, is all working well. <laughs> <laughs> so our best result wasn't as good, so today I'm so happy to see this. Um, hi, Kristen. I'm going to actually read a little bit about Kirsten, and then I'll give you my own personal opinion. Um, based in Los Angeles, Kirsten practices integrative wellness that take into consideration a person's emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being, just what we were talking about. She loves to educate people on the science behind the modalities that she uses in order for them to be proactive and understand the benefits in their own self-care practice. Kirsten's sessions are interactive, immersive, and self-care experiences for the body, mind, and soul. These classes and events allow people to come together, whether virtually or in person, in a healing environment, share, support one another, and take a break from their busy lives. And many consider them to be very transformative, enlightening, and even life-changing experiences. And I can speak to that because one of the big pleasures in my life, um, I moved to LA, I guess, around 11 years ago. I was taking my, my holistic health classes that first year, and Kirsten was one of the first people that I met, and we have been friends ever since. Um, and Kirsten, it's so funny, because when you move to LA, I think part of that experience is, I didn't know a soul, you know, I, 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 I knew nobody. So I could kind of do and be anything. There was something very freeing about that, as well as a little scary, of course, but um, I decided to really just open myself up to new experiences. So when Miss Kirsten <laughs> came around and said, we're going on a moon hike, why don't you join us? And I'm, we're hiking at night under the moon. Okay, I, all right, I, I'm in. And it was magical, of course. So Kirsten, I think of always as taking you on these beautiful experiences um, that you may not otherwise do and they're always magical. Um, another time I, I went to um, a home event that she had um, for one of her sound bath healings, which is what she's known for in particular. And oh, I, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. You know, the, the sounds that she can produce with the bowls that she uses is amazing. And then her just overall presence. And then another time, and I still refer back to this one, uh, many times I'll just think of it um, at whatever moment it pops up and that was um, on a wolf I guess it was a hike I'm not sure if we called out on a hike but we walked with the wolves in a sanctuary and at the end of the day we were up on this plateau and we had you know a sleeping bag and things to keep warm because it can get cold even though it's hot during the day it can get cold there at night and uh, Kirsten was doing her magical, you know, sounds, and all of a sudden, but there was a moon, and all of a sudden, all of the wolves chimed in, and it was 
I don't know, I guess as much of a spiritual experience as you could possibly um, experience. And so with that, um, I'm introducing <laughs> you to Kirsten Korot. And today she's going to, well, that's sort of a good segue because she's going to talk about the moon. And I know we, we know we see all kinds of posts and things and I've, um, you know, I, I've kind of experienced a little bit of, of moon work, I guess we'll call it, and then setting intentions, I've done those and, you know, some different things, but Kirsten's truly the expert. And I wanted her to really talk to you in particular about how does it relate to you and your self-care? So Kirsten, welcome. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Yeah, the, the moon is something that I just intuitively started working with probably about 20 years ago before. Same with sound, before a lot of this stuff was even out there. It was just something I had always, you know, even as a kid, I would always want to look at the moon and there was just a connection. And naturally as, you know, then over the years, I really started to study more. And this past year in um, the pandemic, I said, you know what, I'm really going to go even deeper, even though I've been doing the work, you know, for the years and went into getting myself certified as a moonologer. So I went even deeper into the work so I could understand even more. And it's something as women that um, you know, it's something when I like when I've taken people out under the full moon with the wolves. The reason I do that is because part of the self care that I think is so important is to connect with nature. And so being away from the stresses of the day and away from our normal, you know, day to day activities and being out in nature and with the animals and with the moon, we're really connecting into the cycles that are ancient that as humans were connected into, but we get disconnected from in our day-to-day -day world. And part of that is so important for our self-care. And as women, you know, the moon is something that we're connected to from the get-go when we come into the world. And when we come into our menstrual cycle, that aligns with the moon. I don't know if a lot of women are aware of that, but the the actual word moon comes from the word menses and month and so in the old times you know ancient women lived their lives around around the you know the moon and its relationship to their menstrual cycle and typically we, they would menstruate with the new moon and ovulate with the full moon and so you get to get you're naturally aligned with that it's just that we don't really learn about that and we don't really learn how we can use that as a tool to connect even when we go through menopause those are natural things that our body is already deeply connected to the the lunar phases and so we can go even a step farther since it's already ingrained in us to use it energetically and practically with different practices that keep us listening to our bodies and our emotions and use it as a, as a roadmap each month towards feeling into what our bodies are feeling, our emotions are feeling, and using that to guide our self-care and our nourishment. So as we're paying attention to our bodies, those are a resource for us. As we're following the moon phases, it becomes um, a habit that we can do each month, you know? And so that way you're making time for balance. So like in the new moon, when we're setting intentions, we're looking at, you know, what are the things that I want to manifest and accomplish over the course of the next month, from this new moon to this following new moon. And that's a, why it's a prime time for setting intentions. It's when we plant the seeds like you would in nature, right, for what you want to manifest, and you start to put your fire, your, you know, your energy towards it. And that's when you really reflect and look at, for your own self-care, you're tuning in and getting clear about what you really want. And you're sitting down and getting still and quiet and making time to get clear about what you want, you know, which a lot of times we don't do. We just keep pushing forward and we'll throw, we'll throw intentions into the universe. I want to manifest $10,000 a month. I want to win the lottery. I want a new house, all those things but we're not really sitting down and going, but is that really what I want? You know, and like just honing down first into what is your heart and soul really want right now? What's, 
And the most important thing that I tell people in your own self care is if you want to manifest something in your life, you have to, it has to come from your soul and your heart. And it has to be something that you believe really can become a reality, not a pipe dream, not a wish you toss out to the fairies or whatever, but really the, if, if you, if you can't see it and believe it, you're not going to manifest it. And yeah, that, I, and that self is such an important point, Kirsten, is that, you know, I think that people like throw out these things and then it's like, well, that doesn't work because it's not happening and they're not really paying attention. Like, is that what you think you should want or is it what you really want and need? Yeah, when you say really want and need, you have to feel it in your body. You have to feel it to your core because the biggest block to manifesting anything is self-doubt. That's the biggest block. And if you have any doubts that you can achieve it, you're not gonna move towards it. So doing that practice each month with the moon keeps you in touch, connected to your heart, keeps you in touch with your inner wisdom, your inner voice, the intuition that we have as women that's natural to us. So the process of even writing those down creates more clarity. And then you look at that and you go, is that really what I want? Is that really what I think I can achieve? And if it's not, and you can't feel it in your energetic body as something that's real for you, then you have to look at maybe that's not what I really want, you know? And it, so it helps the self-care part of doing that with the moon is it creates a practice of focus, staying focused on your goals for one thing, you know? And then, and then, we look at the waxing moon and that's the, 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 for the week after the new moon. And that's when you put your self care towards taking action. Okay, so you've set your intentions. Now, what are you gonna do? So you take action and you can actually create like two columns on, on a, a list. You can write down, um, and what I always tell people at the new moon is, okay, you've made your new moon wishes, intentions, write down one action step you can take over the next week or the next day after that. So at the waxing moon, which follows the new moon for a week, you look at your action steps and you write down what did I achieve towards that in one column and what were my challenges in the next column. And so you're staying focused. And that when we talk about self-care, that may mean did I take downtime? Did I exercise? Did I do diet? Did I follow, you know, whatever it is that you wanted to manifest in your own self-care is important too. Not, you know, as women, as entrepreneurs, we can get all on the, the work stuff, but make your list of, you know, like if you wanted to start a new diet, did you stick to, did you even, you know, make a plan and stick towards that? So you make your two lists that week of, what did I actually achieve towards it? And we're talking about the small achievements, the littlest things, you know, and what were my blocks? You know, what blocked me? Where do I need to focus to, you know, overcome those obstacles? And so that's using the next moon phase, right? And then we move into the full moon. And that's when, and the full moon, I know as women, you know, a lot of times I see it with clients, uh, the full moon can be really emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And really a lot of heavy energy, you know, that we really, and as women, I think we really feel when the full moon is coming. And so that, that's the perfect time to do self-love work, healing work, whatever way you can, you know, that's why I love to do, that's why I've done the, the ones with the wolves. That's so healing. It's so releasing. It gets rid of, you know, doing sound, doing meditation, doing yoga, whatever it is, he, you know, that feels healing for you, taking yourself for, you know, a massage, whatever it is, to get that heavy energy out. It's also, though, a time of celebration and amplifying that energy because the moon is at its fullest. It's shining bright in the sky. And so that's where we can reflect on, again, like everything we've accomplished since the new moon. It's another check-in point, you know, and to also make our gratitude list 
you know, one of the things we do at the full moon when I do the rituals is we, we make a forgiveness list because a lot of time and, and on that forgiveness list is just letting go of the stuff that feels heavy, forgiving things with other people, but also forgiving ourselves because that's the hardest thing is we a lot, a lot of times don't forgive ourselves for oh. the little things that we've done, you know, so this oh. is when we do our forgiveness. I forgiveness is one of those things that people tend to not understand how healing that is for ourselves. You know, we, we can talk about, you know, the other person or the other thing, whatever it is, uh, but it really helps us heal. Yeah. And we, because the thing is maybe we didn't achieve everything we wanted to, and we're really hard on ourselves and we need to forgive and let go of that, you know, and then making a, a gratitude list of all the people you're grateful for all the little things that you accomplish that you're grateful for so the full moon is an opportunity of celebration of forgiveness of gratitude which is so important to release that from our hearts and that's little. part of self-care too and uh, releasing our expectations and outcomes is a big thing too and this is when we like surrender to the universe and trust that whatever is happening in our lives is for the highest good of what we need, right? And so we do that with different rituals as well. And, you know, we'll jot and I'll walk people through different ways that we like different moon journaling questions, you know, and then we, um, you know, just kind of, it's a really healing time. And then that last phase after the full moon, before we're going back into the new moon, is the waning moon. And that is, that's like the last two weeks before we then go back into a new cycle. And um, that's really uh, like a, a deep releasing. I mean, even more than the full moon, that is really where we release our old patterns, our behaviors, um, things that aren't serving us so that we're, if you think of it like decluttering, clearing the space, the energetic, the emotional, even the physical space, like that's a good time to clear out the house, to declutter, you know, to release all the things that are no longer serving you before you go back into another month and you set new intentions for the new moon. So it's like you have this nice calendar of ways that you can do your self-care during the phases of the moon, but also then in that waning time, that's, um, that's where the energy is really beautiful and gentle and flowing, and that's a real like resting time, you know, getting massages, recharging time, you know, doing, do, you know, stepping deeper into your yoga, your meditation, going out in nature, um, you know, and just uh, focusing in just on that reboot, restore, rest time, which we are, as women, a lot of times really bad at. <laughs> we take care of everybody else and we put ourselves last, but the most important thing you have to do is if you don't put yourself first on self-care list, then you're going to go down with the ship. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I know I um, attest to that. So, yes, yeah. super, like, really important. Yeah, so those are just kind of like the the quick skim through of the of the phases, and then we just you know go into a lot more deep you know ways that you can work with that. So I don't know if you have any questions. Anybody has any questions? Um, I don't. I don't see a question yet, other than a hello from Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> um, I I have a question though. Yeah. So okay, so we're working with the moon cycles. Um, I always like to know what what's what's the best way to like how do you start like what where where do we start. What's, what's a little kind of a ritual around this that we could start with? Okay, so, you know, I mean, you can start at the, the new moon and you can, you know, like I have people that come in with me and we do the rituals. You can do little rituals for yourself at home. So in the new moon, um, you know, you can create some time to put aside for yourself. Set, I always tell people, set up a really peaceful space in your house uh, light some candles, put on your favorite music, 
uh, get a journal or a paper and pen out if, for those that have crystals that want to have their favorite crystals or sacred you know pieces around have the things that call to your heart around you and um, take some time if you can even like 15 minutes and think about you you can think about it like nature okay so you can think about this you're creating a space in the new moon to plant new seeds in the soil that you want to, you know, you want to grow over the course of the next month, right? So, and it's taking time to just like close your eyes even, like I said, you can put music on or if you have a meditation you like to listen to, or, you know, when I do sound, I, you know, I'll do sound so they can kind of quiet their mind. A way to quiet your mind and then sit down and, and really take a moment to think if there's a particular seed you want to plant um, that you want to manifest in the in the coming month, and you and you think about, you know, again, you have to feel into what is it that I really want, and it has to come from the heart and the soul, you know, not what you think you should have, not what other people have told you you should manifest, but really what is get deeply in touch and just take time to jot down without thinking too much, whatever comes to mind, you know, the best thing is to start there and to look at what, you know, what area of your life you want to, you know, set an intention for something you want to manifest. Think about a seed you want to plant um, and feeling into, as you're writing it down, is this what I really want? Can I feel it in my body? Is it something I believe I can manifest? And then the best thing to do is create an affirmation around it because that helps, you know, so create an affirmation. So let's say um, you want to, you know, bring in a certain, you know, you want to boost your finances. So I would, you want to put it in the present. So you want to just, put those feelings of feeling energized, like, I feel so amazing now that I am bringing in this abundance this month from creating programs for my business or whatever it is, but you want it to feel like it's present. So, and like, oh my God, I can't believe how excited I am that I have created, I have manifested this amazing new home or whatever it is, you know, but you've got to put it in the way where you can actually put it into an affirmation that feels like it's in your body. And then you want to be able to, you know, and I tell people, I know that, you know, we talk about doing a list of 10, but really three and pick mm -hmm. one major one, create, yeah. an, create an affirmation that feels real and that you can look at every day. Yeah, I know? agree you know, uh, maybe less is more to start. Yeah, less is more, yeah. And write your feelings down around it. How does that make you feel? You know, how does it make you feel imagining that and put, feeling it like present in your life? Because like I said, you have to, and if you feel any self-doubt around it, relook at it and say, okay, what, you know, listen to your intuition. And if your gut is telling you, well, I don't know if I can really do that. Sit with yourself. Give yourself the time to really sit and find what is, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. Remember, like, you know, like, let's say you, you know, somebody wants a new home, but you know you don't have the money for that. So if you think about the baby step backwards. I want to manifest, a, you know, the income to be able to put forward towards getting my dream home. Start there. Don't put out the big one, but think about the, the, to step back first, write those down. And then you want to work with those each day, you know, and write down, like I said, an achievable action step that you can take the next day, you know? So that's the way you can start with the new moon is just kind of create your own ritual of getting in touch with what is it that I really want um, and seeing if that feels right for you and really being able to feel it in your body as already manifest. And, yeah. then, and I, so what you're describing is also just a really good way. I mean, there's a little kind of magical fun involved because we're yeah. working with 
so beautiful, the moon, and, you know, it's always, you know, been there. Looking that, at that certainly in a little different way, but also, I think, um, just just a way to, to, to really start getting more in tune with what's happening with you and your body. I think we're so distanced sometimes that, um, you know, that you, this can just be maybe a way in of really paying more attention of what's happening here, right? Right, a way in of really paying attention to what's happening. And, yeah. you know, there's also ways, um, you know, when you want to get deeper into it, um, you know, the way that I teach when you're working with the moon is that we also look at the energy of the moon each month because it changes. So we look at what sign the moon is in each month because that gives us another deeper clue to what areas it's going to affect all of us in terms of the energy that's coming in. For example, um, like we have the, the full moon that's, that's coming in to Capricorn that's going to be happening for us in, on the, the 24th. Mm -hmm. And so what is, you know, Capricorn? So this is what I teach also. So let's say at the full moon, we look at where the moon sits and what sign, and it gives us clues again. So Capricorn is all about focus, motivation, self-discipline. So we look at that vibration, and then that can take us deeper into our setting our intentions. Where do we need more focus? Where do we need more, more motivation? Where do we need more self-discipline? That is another signal to us of like, because when we work with it each month, it's going to move into a different sign that's going to hone in on a certain area that we can work with in our lives. And when we go even deeper, and when I do look at somebody's natal chart for people that really want to go deeper, then I look at where is Capricorn in your natal chart? Because then that's very personal. Mm -hmm. And that shows you, this is where I really want to hone in. Like for example, the Capricorn full moon for me is in my eighth house, which is sex and money. <laughs> So that's telling me like I need to focus more maybe on intimacy and my relationship. I need to look at my finances, you know, so it's like you can, you know, once you get into it, you can personalize it because our, our rising signs, you know, we, we talk about astrology for people that want to go into this even deeper. You know, we have our sun signs, which we share with a lot of people. Right? right, which is which is our zodiac sign. Right, but but when you go by when you were born, where you were born, the time you were born, we get our rising sign, and that is the most personal part of us because that is based specifically on when, where we were born, and the time, and so that's unique for us. So that's like our own like personal insight into how we present ourselves to the world. So then, so then when we look at our rising sign, that shows the flow of how all of the signs move in our houses. So each month, the sign that the moon is in is going to be in a different house. So by the time that we, this is why I love doing it as a calendar. By the time that we have worked with the moon for 12 months, we've worked through all the different aspects of our life because each house represents different things. So we have like the first house, that's our appearance, how you come across to the world. The second house relates to our cash, our property, our possessions. So you can set intentions around those things. The third house is our communications, how you express yourself, you know, travel, things like that. The fourth house is home and family and um, wherever feels like home. The fifth house is romance, creativity, children. So let's say we have a month where the moon is in that. It's telling us we need to focus more on our home, our family, our kids, being joyful and being playful and being in our creative, you know, so things like that. So all, each house that we move through and we have a love zone house, the sex and money house, our adventure and travel house, 
you know, we have our professional life, our reputation in one house, we have our social networks, and that, you know, so if a moon is in that area, then that's telling us we need, you know, maybe we need to boost our social media and get out to more people and use that in our business to help network more. And then our 12th house, which is our deepest spiritual space. So like I said, when you start doing this work over the course of a year, you're moving through all of the areas of your life, which is a beautiful way to have kind of, you know, a check-in so that you're kind of connecting in and really learning about yourself in all the areas of your life. And yeah. so that's what I love about that work, you know? Well, this, I, this is fascinating. And I think it, it definitely gives a whole nother layer to, you know, working on our own personal self. So I love this. It sounds like you had a little treat you were going to share with us. Oh, 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 you mean there are little, okay. Yeah, so I was thinking, I got to put my glasses on now. <laughs> that, um, yeah, old, old lady eyes. But um, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of pull a group moonology card. So I have my, I have my, my moon cards and just see, I always like to do this for my groups. I do this daily for myself. Um, the other thing that, uh, for those that do want to learn how to do this work even deeper, we also have daily moons. So each month the moon also moves through all the signs in the zodiac. So today, right. like we're, we're in a Virgo moon. Um, and so uh, this, this uh, Virgo moon happens to be in, you know, triggering my sex and money house. <laughs> so like today <laughs> I have to think about, you know, looking at, you know, uh, all the things around, you know, taxes, finances, all those things, and also relationship stuff. So I'm going to pull a group uh, card for us and see what our message is for the group for today. So I want everybody who's there, if you're on the recording or you're live, let's just put our collective energy together and let's just see what our message is for the group. I'm going to hold it up, see if we can see it. Aha, okay. So I don't know if you can see this, but it says, it's backwards, a time for healing. Oh. This is our message for today, a time for healing, and it's the balsam balsamic moon. So let me get my glasses out, and I will read to you guys what our message is for today. Like I said, I have to get my, uh, let me see if I can get into this here. Okay. Okay, so a time for healing. So, pulling this card suggests that the past is in the past and a bright future is beckoning. However, before you take your next step, make sure that both you and the situation feel healed. This is not time to paper over the cracks or to simply pretend that everything is okay. Okay. Rather, you still need a little more time to heal, to soothe yourself and anyone else who needs it. Then remind yourself that anything is possible if you believe it. This is also the time to surrender, to wait to hear guidance from the universe. Powerful insights can be had. If you know that someone or something really isn't good for you, this card is a reminder to surrender it. Start to work on your belief in your dreams so you're ready when the time comes. And that's a beautiful message. That is a great message. That's yeah. a perfect end our conversation oh my goodness that's a lot um, yeah <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciate all of your wisdom and um i can see the, the why i've gotten a little confused with the moon and where i should be paying attention etc there, there's a lot there so thank you for being our guide on that and with that said where can people learn more to work with you okay so I, I'm really excited that I'm 
starting in-person ones if you're in LA again. So um, that's one way that I let, yeah, yeah, I know. So on Sunday, we're, I'm going to do, uh, and I'm bringing in another sound healer. So we're going to have two sound healers. We're going to be outdoors in a park in Valley Glen, and we're going to do the solstice, which is a really powerful time for new beginnings. So we're going to do a little healing circle and sound, and that that they can find um, uh, on my website, which is kirstencorotinternational.com. And on uh the 25th, I'm going to do a woman's circle. We're going to do this one indoors at a beautiful yoga studio. And we're going to do full moon rituals. And I'll walk through the moon journaling. And this Cap we're going to work with the Capricorn one, which is focusing uh, in, like I said, really focus, getting focused in on what you want to achieve. And we're going to do some rituals out in the garden and indoors with sound. Um, and then I do online ones as well, so they can reach out to me. And coming up, uh, I'm feeling a really big pull to do a, a month-long course online where we'll, we'll have some Zooms and then I'll, you know, give out some worksheets you can work with as well. We're, we're going to work in self-care and manifesting through all of the phases of the moon. So we'll work through the new moon, the, wax, the waning, the full moon, the waxing, all of it together. And so I'll be putting that out in uh, the next month or so. That sounds wonderful. Kirsten, thank you so much. Oh, we'll put your link in, in the comments here so that people can follow along with you. And uh, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you so much, Sharon. Take care.